Okay, so we have a nice tidy application structure. Uh, the only thing that I didn't do in the last part is pull over the HT access file into public. Now, the reason this is a problem is obviously this needs to live where we're pointing our uh, URIs to. So in this case, let's just go and update our roots just to kind of prove this. So if we come over to roots and web and go ahead and say forward slash home, now that we're inside of this public directory, if we do this, it's going to look for a home folder. So what we want to do is just very quickly fix this up by taking our HT access file. We can delete this out of the root now because this isn't where people land. We can go ahead and place it inside of public like so, paste this in and we're done. So now we have the ability to visit forward slash and then whatever we define in our roots. Okay, so let's go and just switch this back because we're going to be using this route here just to play around with some of our auto loaded classes that we're going to be building. So let's say you need to build a class for something and this is entirely likely within an application. So what we're going to do is and what I would usually do is create an app directory. Now, this is where we're going to create all of our own classes, nothing to do with the slim framework. And we're going to organize these in such a way that they can be auto loaded. So what we need to do is come up with a way that we can create any kind of class in here, whether that's a controller, whether it's middleware, which we're going to be looking at later, whether it's models, which again, we're going to be looking at later. And we just want to be able to use these using a namespace. Now, we already spoke earlier when we went ahead and bootstrapped uh, Slim up uh, or newed up a Slim app instance that this is under the Slim namespace. And this used is PSR4 auto loading to go ahead and load this in. So what we're going to do is we're going to update our composer.json file to auto load any classes that we include in app so we can just use them. And I'm gonna show you how to do this with namespaces. Now, if you are already familiar with PSR4 auto loading and already familiar with namespaces, then there's probably nothing new here, uh, but this will give you a good idea about how I structure uh, my projects. So what we want to do is define where we want to auto load things from. This will give us the ability to include namespaces and then just have these available in our project. So inside of composer.json, as well as being able to require independencies, we can also define out, like I said, where we auto load classes from. And we already know that over inside of Bootstrap, when we pull in, uh, or rather over in index, if we just come over to public index, when we pull in our auto load here, which to be honest, could actually go over in our Bootstrap file. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I probably would prefer to put this in here. Uh, we know that auto load just pulls all of the auto loaded stuff from composer. Now, in this case, what we can now do is say that we want to auto load using PSR4, which is a standard of auto loading. And I'm going to leave a link to this in the course links just so you can go ahead and read about this. And now what we can do is define out our application namespace or our vendor namespace or our project namespace, whatever you want to call it. So in this case, what I would do is I would say, well, I want to call my app app or maybe I'm building code course and I want to call it code course, or maybe it's simply just my name and I'm just going to write my name in there. In our case, what I'm going to do is call it app. So it's nice and generic. And then I want to load from the app directory. So composer is in the root directory. And when we go ahead and load this in, it will pull from app. So now that we've updated this, let's just go ahead over to the terminal and inside of the directory that we're working in, we're going to go ahead and run composer dump, auto load, and then we're going to pass the optimize flag. Now, this what this will do is it will basically take all of the requirements you've got, anything you are auto loading, any individual files you're auto loading, and it will dump the auto loader, which we saw earlier over here, just here. So this will allow us to update this. And now what we can do is as long as we have the correct namespace for any classes we create inside of app, we will have them available to use in our project. And I mean anywhere in our projects, so it doesn't matter where we use them. So this is nothing to do with Slim, but it is really helpful in a mini framework like this. So what we're gonna do just to give an example is uh, create a new folder inside of app and I'm gonna call this models. Now, really importantly, I'm using a capital M or an uppercase M here, uh, just because of the way that auto loading works. And we will see this in a moment. And then I'm going to go ahead and inside of here, create a new class. So we're just going to keep this super simple and we're going to create uh, effectively what may become a user model. So just a user class. 
So let's go ahead and create this. Now, as well as defining out our class like so, we also want to give this a namespace so we know where to auto load it from or more appropriately, Composer knows where to auto load it from. So in this case, I would say namespace app because this is the vendor namespace that we gave just over here. And then really what we just do is follow down the directory structure. So I know that this belongs under app, which is effectively this folder here, models, which is this folder here, and this is the class that belongs under here. So now what we can do is we're not gonna put anything in here. We'll just go ahead and test this out. We can come over to roots, come over to web, and we can create a new instance of this using its namespace, much like when we pulled Slim in. So let's say we were creating a new user model. This isn't gonna work because we've not defined the namespace. Let's just do a var dump on user and see what we get. Come over to the browser, give that a refresh, and we get a slim application error. So if we just bring back our error reporting, so if we come over to bootstrap and app, and just inside of here, we already saw an example of this earlier, I'm gonna pull back in my settings and override the default uh, within slim. And this is display error details, and we're gonna set this to true. So now let's go over and refresh again, and you can see class user not found. So this is really helpful. It's telling us we can't find this class, and that's because it belongs under app models. So there's a couple of ways to do this. We could say something like app models user, and then this would go ahead and work, or at the top of wherever we're uh, kind of using this model, we can explicitly import this. So we could say use app models user, and then down here, we would have to get rid of this and that would work as well, like so. So that is how we would do that. Like I said, later on, we're gonna be doing things like creating controllers folders. Maybe you had some middleware, which we're gonna look at uh, later as well. Maybe you had just custom things that you wanted to build. So maybe you had uh, a mail class that sends email. You could go ahead and create a mail directory. And under this, you may create some kind of mailer.php. And in this case, you would go ahead and you would set the namespace to app mail, and then you would have a class here of mailer. So hopefully that makes sense. But now whatever we create under this app directory, as long as we have the correct namespace and we have the correct class name, we can go ahead and use it pretty much like this. So we're gonna be doing a lot of this. So if you are still a little bit unsure, we'll be creating lots of classes in here, particularly when we get onto looking at controllers in the next section. So let's tidy this up for now. Hopefully that makes sense, but if it doesn't, we'll be getting a lot of practice throughout the course. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these folders. We don't need any of that. And just before we head over, let's go ahead and clear up this route as well, just so we can kind of start afresh. So there we go. That is PSR for auto loading, not as scary as it sounds. And now anything we add in here, we can load in to any of our routes or anywhere in our project.